Hi, I'm Ian, and welcome back to Astro Time Traveller. In this video, it's part four of me trying to do the Pillars of Creation in M16, the Eagle Nebula. The last couple of nights I've been imaging, I've really failed to capture much of the uh, M16. Uh, I've only got, uh, I think, two images on one night and about three on the other. Um, I had some real disasters with my autofocusing. It uh, operated overnight, but it didn't actually get into focus, so I was left with uh, very out of focus uh, images and probably about 17 out of 24 by the time I saw it and corrected it. As you know, with the ASI Air Pro, I, I tend to try and uh, leave it overnight and just let it run. Um, but actually with that happening tonight, I'm gonna set my alarm and uh, come down about um, 1.20 to make sure that everything is running smoothly. And then it should cross over to start doing uh, M16 at about 1.35. So I'm just gonna monitor that and if need be intervene to try and make sure I get really good focus to try and capture it because it's going to be a very clear night tonight and as you can see it's it's beautiful out here and uh, we even got uh, the moon right up there you can just about see it uh, and we've got that uh, red moon coming later in the week but I don't think I'm going to see it because it's going to be um, very low on the horizon over towards the west so it may not be good uh, for me at all so we'll wait and see but anyway tonight we're going to concentrate on on that but I'm also going to try and do the uh, the supernova as well so supernova 2022 uh, hrs so we'll see how that comes out uh, i got some images of it uh, a couple of nights ago which looks okay um, but i'm just seeing if i can run a bit more tonight and get a bit more data on it so stay tuned and we'll see how we do with part four of uh, the pillars of creation So here's my image of the uh, Pillars of Creation. I think this time it's probably about 50 uh, actual images that I've used. And what I've done so far is a bit of dynamic cropping, a bit of uh, dynamic background extraction and some background neutralization. And I've stretched the image using the histogram transformation. And now I just want to take out some of the noise. So I'm using Noise Exterminator to, uh, to improve the noise in the image. The actual image is pretty good anyway before doing this so uh, and I've done it past stretching the image you can do it on the the linear image if you do it early enough so here it is it's now with that noise reduction in it and I'm just using this as an example um, of how I can now create more varied colors than what comes off the uh, single one shot color camera using the L-Extreme filter so the first thing I need to do is extract the channels from this image so the red green and blue we're not really going to use the blue channel, so we can put that to one side. And then what you should really try and do is make the green channel look like the red channel. And that means brightening it up to as far as possible to get as much data uh, similarly aligned to the red channel. So I'm using here the histogram transformation to do that. And I can also use a bit of curves. So we'll first, first start with the histogram transformation. That doesn't look too bad and then I'll go into curves and I'll use a little bit of curves here again. Um, I think the problem here is I probably uh, the data is not looking that great so I'm going to probably bring down the red channel as much as I'm going to move up the green channel and ideally you should really just be moving up the green channel. So I'm just doing that to, uh, to ease the uh, consolidation when I add the two red and green channels together but here you can see I'm now just going into the red channel. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit so clearly my main focus is on the actual pillars. So I'm not really that bothered too much about the rest of the M16 nebula because I'm going to focus in on the, uh, the pillars of creation. So now I have the two channels fairly closely aligned. I now can use a bit of uh, pixel math to actually add the channels together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the red channel and times it by 0.6. And there we go. And then I'm going to add the green channel times 0.4. So I get a total of one altogether. So I just go into that. I select create a new image. It's going to be grayscale. So we do that. And then I'll just uh, create that image. Oh, I always press the wrong button. There we go. So now we're going to create that image. And the first thing I want to do is probably rename that image 
and uh, we might as well call that uh, new green because um, that's what we're going to now be using to and I'm going to call it 6040 because I'm going to actually that's what I use as my uh, ratio between the red channel at 60% and the green channel at 40% now I'm adding all the channels together and you can see I'm using red for luminous red in the red channel I'm now using that new green in the green channel and I'm actually using the standard green channel in the blue channel and then I'm going to kick uh, on the prominence again I hit the wrong button and now it will create me a color image um, and this really is what uh, we're trying to do for all of this and there you go so you can see that color image comes out pretty good and now I can play around with that with curves etc so I'm going to save this um, because what I'm then going to do is do a number of images using the different ratio from the red and the green channel so here I use a ratio of 60, 40, red to green, but I'm going to test it all the way from 10 to 90, red to green, and then all the way to 90, 10, red to green, and just see what happens with the different channels. So I'll come back and I'll show you those now. So there you are. So top left is 10% red, 90% uh, green, and then I go through all the percentages uh, way all to the other extreme where I've got 10% red and 90% green. And hence you can see a much greener uh, overall image in that final one. Um, the, the actual final one here is the original image, which was the one-shot colour camera with the uh, L-Extreme uh, filter. So now you've got those, what you can do is now play around with those. And here I'm just going to go in and use an example. So here's one of the ones I've used, and this is, um, I think, the... Uh, 90, 20, oh, this is the 10, red 10, 90 um, green. So it's very heavily weighted to red. And now what you can do is play around with uh, that colours using uh, the curves transformation. Now, clearly you would spend a lot more time on this. I'm not putting any uh, masks on it, so um, I'm not really doing it as I should do. I probably want to put a mask around the actual pillars so I then can keep the pillars the same and change the background. Uh, but here I'm just showing you an example of how you can play around with colours. And if you do use a one-shot colour camera and you use um, maybe one of the uh, filters like the L Enhance or the L Extreme, the original uh, image you're going to get is going to be that kind of standard red colour. But here you can play around to get various different colours. So there's one using the ratio uh, 10 red to 90 green. And here's the other way where I'm using... 90 sorry 90 red and 10 green and here I'm using one that is only 10 red and 90 green and then you get a much more greener image overall and again you can play around with this using the curves and clearly if you put uh, too much color in you get too much purple for example so here I'm I'm putting in quite a bit of purple as I'm using the red and the blue channels within this so I can just put that onto the original image and what I can do if you do get too much purple, you can uh, invert the image and take it out using the SCNR uh, green. And I'll just show you how you do that. So invert the image here. And there we go. So you can see now the purple is green. And then you can go in and use the SCNR. Uh, there we go. And uh, just use the green to take out that green, which actually reverses out the purple. So it just takes a few seconds to do that, not too long. And then once we've done that, what we'll do is we'll convert the image back to uh, the original uh, state. So just go back to invert. And then you can see how there it is. It comes out. And now the purple has been removed. And uh, you can again further do work on stretching the image using Curves Transformation to uh, get a different colour balance. So that's not what I finally do. So this is the fourth video. In the fifth video, I'm actually going to do... The full works on this which I haven't done like deconvolution and uh, other things to get a better image as far as possible but what I will now show you is my best four images so far so here you can see the first image was what I did with very few frames then was the second and the third in my last video and here you can see the fourth image now this one I, I haven't used deconvolution on but I have processed quite a lot and I have used something like topaz um, sharpening as well and I think that's pretty good I think it's come out really nice particularly the top part of the pillars which you can see here has got quite a bit of detail into it so if we just kind of go into close up I'm really happy with that so that's with I think 50 frames that I used at five minutes each 
And my final one, video I'm going to do, will be uh, video five on the pillars of creation. And I think for that I'm going to have somewhere around 80 frames. So hopefully that will give me a little bit more data and a little bit more information to really get those pillars jumping out. I do like the colours in that fourth image, um, but I'll do that. Come back with a fifth and final uh, video on the pillars of creation. It's been a real big long project I've been doing through the spring, um, really focusing on it. And we'll see what that final image looks like in the next video. But I am pretty happy with this one so far. And I think Topaz uh, sharpening really helped a lot. Um, but I'll run through in the final video some of the other things I'll do, like deconvolution, etc. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I'll leave you now with the final image that I took in this, the fourth of the series, Pillars of Creation.